Did you know that you can actually double tap and then hold to zoom in or out using Google Maps? Or that by downloading a simple application, you can quickly trigger a sound recording from your quick settings? Well, welcome to 20 more hidden Android features that are sure to improve how you use your phone. Let's go. Now, speaking of your quick settings menu, it doesn't just stop at triggering a sound recording. Using an app like Tile Shortcuts means you can actually place any app, shortcut or website directly into your quick settings panel, which has the possibility of improving your productivity big time. Switching back and forth between apps to copy and paste text can be a real drag, but if you launch Google Chrome into split screen mode, then you can actually just drag and drop any text from Chrome into whichever app is open at the same time. Definitely a neat time saver. But for those times where the app in question doesn't actually let you copy text, like the Google Discover page or YouTube, using universal copy will actually scan the text and make it copyable. Do you ever find yourself in a situation where, for some reason, your phone just doesn't have great network reception? Well, try switching on airplane mode for about five to 10 seconds, then switch it off. This will force your phone to start a new cell tower search, meaning it will instead locate those that are nearby, thereby improving your signal. With the amount of apps we download, it's hard to keep a track of which ones have access to our camera. And so using cameraless allows us to manually switch off and disable all the cameras on our devices, thereby preventing apps from accessing them. You can even block the camera on an app by app basis. Enabling the simplified reading mode in Google Chrome will actually hide any ads. You do so by heading into the settings menu, then the accessibility tab, and then by switching on simplified view for web pages. Not only will the articles and web pages look that much cleaner, but now those pesky article interrupting ads are no more. Did you know that most apps have beta versions available that can sometimes offer a whole range of additional features? Take WhatsApp, for example. For a long time there, using the beta version was the only way to enable the dark theme that so many of us had wanted for so long. Now, despite this, it can often be really difficult to keep a track of which apps have beta versions available, and even if they're allowing in new members. Well, you can use Beta Maniac, which is an app I've mentioned before, to significantly improve this process. It will periodically scan all of the apps on your phone, and if a beta program becomes available, it will send you a notification that you can subscribe to simply by clicking on it. Here's a neat one that may not be applicable right this second, given none of us are really traveling, but if and when we're getting back into it, if you're heading out of town, but you're gonna have limited access to mobile data, then take screenshots of various routes within Google Maps so that you can reference them even without your mobile data. Even better yet, downloading an app like maps.me will allow you to download maps for offline use, meaning you can still use it for directions even when you're offline. Now, we probably all know that the fingerprint scanners on our phones have the option of loading in multiple fingerprints. And whilst you might be tempted to load in as many fingers as you can, a better option is to load in your main fingerprint multiple times. Doing so will greatly improve the scanner's speed and success rate. The Google Assistant has proven to be the leading option in terms of AI virtual assistants. But the crazy thing is, most of us hardly take advantage of all of its features. For example, did you know that you can ask it to remember things for you? You can just say something like, hey Google, remember that I left my keys in my backpack, and then that information is stored. To bring back that information, just say, hey Google, what did I need to remember? And there you go. You can also ask Google to tell you what song is currently playing simply by saying, hey Google, what song is this? And this effectively removes the need to use an app like Shazam to identify a song ever again. Now taking screenshots has always been a two-handed job, but with Screenshot Assistant, you can actually replace your phone's assistant gesture so that it instead takes a screenshot. So this might be a long press on the home button if you're using the traditional three button navigation layout or a swipe in from the bottom corners if you're using full screen gestures. And the downside is you do lose access to whichever virtual assistant you use. But for those who never use an assistant, this app might be the perfect replacement. If you're wondering why sometimes photos end up being too bright, it's because phone manufacturers tend to lean towards overexposing our images because we tend to perceive brighter images as better quality. That said, as a result, we often lose detail in those brighter parts of our images. Well, the easiest workaround to this is by tapping the brightest part of your image whenever you're snapping a photo, which will help in retaining those details in the highlights. And whilst the results will end up darker, you're able to now have a lot more flexibility in editing and can boost those darker parts up all while still retaining those details in the highlights. 
If you're looking to take control over the amount of notifications that you receive on your phone, then Daywise lets you batch notifications to come in together at different times of the day, meaning you can set your phone aside along with those distracting notifications, knowing you'll be able to catch up on them later on. Okay, so we all have that friend who will ask to look at something on your phone, but then will somehow find their way into the other apps installed on your phone. Well, screen pinning helps to solve this. You may have to first enable it in your phone settings menu, just search for screen pinning and switch it to on. But then when you're in your phone's overview menu, tap the app icon and then tap to pin it. Now, whoever is using your phone will only be able to use the app that has been pinned. To unpin an app, swipe up and hold or long press the overview button and you will have to unlock your phone using your preferred authentication method. Problem solved. Now, whilst we're on the topic of having to search through our settings menus to find certain features, if you find yourself consistently going back to certain areas within the settings menu, then save yourself a few taps by setting up a widget. Just long press your home screen to bring up the widgets menu, navigate down to the settings section, and then drag it to your screen. From here, select whichever settings menu you like, and bada boom, bada bing, time saving 101. Speaking of time saving, if you're looking for a fast and efficient way to share files between devices, even without needing access to the internet, then there's really no better option than Google's own files application. Just make sure that the app is installed on both phones, then open it on the sending phone, tap share and then send, and then open the app on the receiving phone and tap receive. The sending phone will create a hotspot for both devices to connect to, and with speeds of up to 480 megabits per second, your files should be transferred within moments. And finally, whilst at the moment we might not be having many people around to our homes, get yourself set up for when that becomes the norm again by setting up a QR code that lets people log in to your Wi-Fi. You can do so using the qrstuff.com website and then you print this out, slap it somewhere on your wall or on your fridge and now when people ask for your Wi-Fi details, just tell them to scan the QR code. This will connect them to your Wi-Fi network without you having to give them your password. But that's it. If you enjoy watching these app style related videos, then I have stacks of content just like it across my channel, some of which I'll link as a playlist as a cart up above and also down in the description below. But aside from that, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.